Mr. Hartman here back again with some art fundamentals and today we're going to talk about realism and impressionism. So to uh, uh, track our styles up to this point, uh, we've had Gothic, we've had Renaissance, we have had Baroque, uh, we have had Rococo, and then we had the kind of dual competing neoclassicism and romanticism, which both kind of came in the early uh, 19th century, or at least came into their form in the early 19th century, late 18th century, um, and kind of were almost contrasting visions of the same ideas in terms of um, what they wanted, what their kind of uh, uh, ideals were, right? And so um, growing out of uh, those two, especially growing out of a, of a so growing out of a reaction to re, to neoclassicism and romanticism, is going to be realism, and then growing out of the uh, concept of the of the salon that we see grow up in the Baroque and the the Academy rules uh, is going to be impressionism as our next two. Okay. Um, and, and frankly, Rococo is pretty small in terms of the rest. If you wanted to even kind of a lump Rococo in over here or altogether kind of like nix it as a major genre, that's probably fine. It's more of a extension of Baroque, um, whereas Baroque into neoclassicism and romanticism is probably a little bit better, more to under, more better to understand the timeline of all this. Right. So uh, let's get into realism. So realism is half of it is exactly what it sounds like. The other half um, is the subject matter, right? Um, and so the, the, so first off, let's go ahead and make this official, right? It's a reaction to the neoclassicism uh, and romanticism of the previous era, uh, especially in terms of subject matter, right? Not necessarily what it looks like, right? It actually shares a lot of similarities to neoclassicism in terms of how it's painted and what it looks like, right? But the subject matter is very different, right? Um, so uh, the realist style is, is, is kind of all centered around the idea that a painting must uh, illustrate all aspects of a subject, even the bad ones, right? Um, illustrate all features of a subject, uh, even bad ones, right? And so how this is uh, especially a reaction to neoclassicism is that neoclassicism really kind of uh, painted over the negative aspects of its subjects, right? Especially, right, when we're looking at things like, uh, you know, the portrait of Napoleon, right? Um, and so that ends up kind of creating uh, the main subject, which is the, the lives of ordinary people, right? The lives of non-nobles, non-royalty, non-military leaders, right? Um, and, and, uh, so it argues that these ordinary people are as important as the historical and religious themes of the day. Right. Um, and uh, those, those were the particular ones that tended to be on show at uh, art exhibitions. Right. And the most famous of the artists and who most forcefully represented it uh, is Gustave Courbet. I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, so Gustave Courbet lived from 1819 to 1877. Okay. Uh, and Gustave, Gustave Courbet, uh, so a couple things just about him. They, they label him as flamboyant and outgoing. Right. Um, and he outrages the audience at the salon. Uh, he outrages the salon audience uh, with uh, a painting of a workman repairing a road. Uh, with a painting of a workman painting or uh, repairing a road. Again, this is. Uh, uh, not the typical theme, right? This is not the subject that the Academy uh, wants to promote, right? Uh, and that piece of art is known as the Stone Breakers, a groundbreaking piece of art um, created in uh, 1849 to 1850. 
Okay. Um, which, let's see if we can pull that up. I believe I can. Give me one second here. It is in the resource, so you've probably seen this. Um, but, um, right. Uh, so here you can see uh, the stone breakers, right? And it's it's just two guys just repairing a railroad, right? It's 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 nothing unique about it. It is it, it looks very neoclassicist in that it's very realistic, right? That's one of the that the other key component of realism. A lot of times that it looks like people, right? It looks like real subject matters, right? Um, as opposed to romanticism, right? Which tended to kind of uh, blur the lines of, of, of realism, right? Um, and so this artwork also had political implications at the time because the world was, uh, especially Europe, right, the, uh, was going through a lot of revolutions in the, and especially in 1848, um, with a wave of revolutions in Europe. Uh, most of them failed, but some of them succeeded. Uh, in Europe in 1848. Right. Um, and then, as they like to do, uh, the other artists, right, are going to be Honoré Damier. Uh, again, I believe another, looks like another Frenchman. Uh, and another Frenchman, Jean-Francois Millet. Okay. With um, Mr. Damier. Damier living from 1808 to 1879, and uh, Millet living from 1814 to 1875. And I do have some of their art uh, here, right? So this is actually, excuse me, this is some more art of Corbet. Uh, and then uh, again, it's just normal people, right? It's peasants, right? And then here uh, we have a work of Damier, right? And a man just kind of sleeping, uh, several people sleeping, looks like maybe inebriated. Uh, and then here's one by Jean-Francois Millet, right? Uh, showing just farmers doing farmer stuff, right? Okay, so that is realism. Um, and then let's go to probably the one of the more important genres. Not to say you know any of the others are unimportant, but impressionism is is our stepping stone into modern styles, right? Or, or the more modern styles of the 20th century. Uh, so impressionism grows out of uh, dissatisfaction with the salon rules and the academy rules, uh, which we kind of saw with real with the realist view, right? With with Corbet bringing the stone breakers to the salon, right? Uh, grow out of dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction with the rigid rules um, uh, of the salon, which, if you recall, was created by Louis the Fourteenth, um, and it's held to recognize selected artists each year. Um, and so we kind of start with a non-impressionist, um, or a guy who at least didn't consider himself to be a, a pre an impressionist, and a very well-known historical figure in art, uh, Edward Monet, uh, who lived from 1832 to 1883. Okay, so Edward Monet does not consider himself an impressionist, but he is a lot of times referred to as the first impressionist. Not to be confused with Monet. And it's going to get confusing here in a second because we're about to bring up Monet. Um, he, uh, he, so he's considered the first impressionist, but he refuses. He refused to be called one. I don't know if it's out of respect to the salon or or what. Um, and so, the key thing about his work that really showed off the um, the impressionist style is uh, the juxtaposition of color. Uh, and, and juxtaposition of very bright colors, right? Bright and contrasting colors. And that is what allows for shadow, right? Or, or light uh, as well, right? And as we're going to talk about here in a little bit, they, the science behind shadows also really influenced uh, the Impressionists, right? Um, and so that greatly influences the artists uh, that come in his wake that are the Impressionists, uh, or at least they will call themselves the Impressionists. Uh, and the key artwork here uh, is uh, Le Déjeuner sur la Herbe. Sur la Herbe? That's hard to say. Um, uh, which is also known, it's got an AKA in English, Luncheon on the Grass. Uh, which was made in 1863. So, uh, let's look at it first. Okay, so this is Luncheon on the Grass. Um, 
it's actually got it, it it's it definitely does not look like later impressionists because it does have a lot of that romantic uh stylings right and in a little bit of that very naturalistic looking style um that romanticism and neoclassism realism also had right um and so this piece is included at uh the salon de refuse in 1863, so the basically the salon for the works that were not accepted by the salon, right in that same year uh, of 63. I'm not gonna make that red because it's right there, um, which were works rejected by the salon. So they kind of went out and created their own, right? Um, and it's very much ridiculed at the time and the scandal of the work um, is that it, it violated the basic rules of art at the time, um, the unwritten rule uh, was violated. And that unwritten rule uh, is that um, the only appropriate nudes in, in art uh, were classical figures uh, or women in exotic settings. Which is um, seems a very uh, very random in a way. It's not, but it seems just like they kind of picked two things that they that they liked, right? Um, and so uh, this this work is based on an engraving, uh, based on a classical engraving or a in, let's say an engraving with classical subject matter, right? Not to confuse it and say it's a Greek and or Roman engraving, uh, but rather it's an engraving of Greek and Roman ideas or, or stories um but we see we but what we see is a is clothed men uh clothed men uh with nude women uh which caused an uproar okay um and so uh, uh again manet continues to uh send his art to the salon in order to kind of get that support right um uh, uh, and so, but what we see though is around that time is um, we see a lot of artists who are disagreeing with the uh, rules of the academy uh, and the salon uh, with the rigid artistic standards of the academy, right? The academy had very specific things it wanted in its artists and was, uh, you know, along with the salon, right? Hugely influential, right? Um, the Academy des Beaux Arts that we talked about with um, um, Louis the Fourteenth, which I'll, I'll write the whole name out just in case, right? Um, and uh, so, so it's the rigid uh, artistic standards that were also favored at the salon, All right? Maybe they, maybe there's a little trickeration there, right? Maybe people who run the academy also run the salon, um, and so. These artists who disagreed uh, set up Impressionism as a new style. And the term Impressionism comes from an artwork uh, known as, uh, let's see here, uh, known as Impression Sunrise. Which was made in 1872 by, well, if you haven't uh, figured out the, the, the cliffhanger here, uh, by Claude Monet. So if you ever have trouble kind of remembering which one comes first, uh, maybe an easy thing to think about is Monet. The A comes before the O, Monet in the alphabet. Therefore, Monet comes before Monet in time as well. Okay, um, and so Claude Monet uh, lives from 1840 to 1926. That is a long life. Uh, 1840 to 1926, um, and let's take a look at Impression Sunrise right now. Okay. So it's got that very um, kind of 
the 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 brush strokes are very visible, right? Which which is a key component of impressions, and right, the the brush strokes are very rapid to kind of capture an emotion, to capture a feeling of the time, of the moment, right? And then also you see those contrasting reds and blues uh, that are very very vivid, right? Okay, um, and uh, the critics actually use the term impression to ridicule the movement, right? Uh, it's originally used to ridicule the Impressionist movement, right? Um, we also see Monet uh, urge uh, urge artists to work outdoors, which was now possible due to technological uh, innovations, right? Um, such as uh, paint and brush production, right? Uh, uh, we see we see paint and brush production uh, that makes um, the uh, art production more portable uh, that made the medium painting so let's not say art uh, made the paint made painting uh, more portable All right um, and so uh, some things about impressionists right they put uh, their colors directly onto the canvas right? Um, with very rapid strokes to capture the changing lights. Um, so, you know, you could paint, uh, uh, you know, one part of the landscape um, at one time, and then you're going to need to change it for other sections of it and stuff, right? Uh, on top of this, we also see um, uh, studies of vision and color uh, lead to the uh, kind of discovery uh, that... Uh, shadows are not gray in color, right? Uh, shadows aren't gray, uh, but rather uh, they are the complementary color of the object casting the shadow. Which allow for the impressionists to use complementary colors when painting shadows. And as they love to do, we got two guys here at the end. Uh, Camille Pizarro and Alfred Sisley as our kind of throw-in guys who they just love to quiz you on, I'm certain. Uh, Camille Pizarro living from 1830 to 1903. Alfred Sisley living from 1839 to 1899. And let's take a look at some of their artworks here briefly. Uh, here's a Camille Pizarro art piece, uh, almost like stippling in a way, but it's just more of just rapid rapid application of the paint onto uh, onto the canvas, right? And then we, here we have Alfred Sisley. Again, the, the brush strokes are very, very evident, right? Um, and the contrasting colors, right, you can kind of see all around, okay? Um, and that is going to do it for realism and impressionism. Uh, we're going to get into kind of the end points of the 19th century, uh, which is going to really start turning the worm about the major changes that are to come uh, in the art field uh, that come with the, the kind of catch-all term of modern, right? Uh, but until then, I...